everyone. Today we're going to continue our uh, Click uh, PLC series and the first thing we'll do is uh, again look at the Automation Direct website. If you go to AutomationDirect.com this is the home page and if you look down to the left hand side you'll see programmable controllers and over to the right you will see the Click PLC series. If you click that then what will come up is the all the modules and communication and manuals that we need. Uh, along the top we hit manuals and then in the list here we can see that we have the click PLC manual. And from the manual, this is it downloaded already, um, this gives you all the information that I'm going to talk about today. And which is the numbering systems and the addressing of the click PLC. So looking at the, uh, the first thing we have to do is look at the data types that are in the Click PLC. And we have bit types, which are on or off. We have integers, which are single words. And they can be anywhere from a range from minus 32,768 to 32,767. We have a double integer word. Okay, then we have a floating point. And the floating point is used for the real numbers that you'll see. Uh, we also have hexadecimal that we use. Um, again, they come in a 16-bit channel. It's uh, 0000 to FFFF. Then we have text, which is a single character, 8 bits, 1 byte of information. And we have an ASCII code. And the ASCII code is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Again, it's located as a 8-bit uh, uh, byte of data. Now, once we understand the data types in the Click PLC, we can go over and we can actually look at the um, what each of the registers are in the PLC. So our input points are located with our, our categories by an X symbol. Our output point is a Y. The control relays are a C. The timers are a T. The counters are a CT. And the system control relays, these are special internal uh, control bits, are, are SC. Now these are a bit type V, so we just discussed that previously. Then what we have is we have data registers. We have DS, DD, DH, and DF depending on what type it is. And there are um, the descriptions for each. Then we have input registers. So instead of looking at the actual bit itself into the PLC, we can actually look at the whole entire input register, or which is an XD, or we can look at the output register as one, all the outputs at one time, YD. Then we have timer registers, TDs, which are integers only. Then we have counter registers, CTD, which are uh, two integers, or double integer. And then we have system data registers, SDs, and they're just integers. And finally, we have a text, which is, again, just a... Uh, uh, symbolized by TXT. So once we understand the data or the memory types and we also understand the, the data types then we can actually look at the um, memory type um, and the range of each in our PLC. So I have a table here that actually uh, shows us exactly what the ranges are. So my input points X001 to X816. So I have 816 different points that I can program for that input and my output point I can have 816 as well. Right. So the the memory in the PLC is usually matches what the, what the controller can do so it's, it's good and the next thing we'll do now is actually check to my click PLC and what we'll do is uh, call up the software and when we call up the software we'll see the connect to PLC and what you'll see we'll hit that what we see is our actual uh, IP address or sub mask now that's what we did last time and we can actually blink the run and error lights on the PLC so you can see them blinking so I'll stop that and we'll just connect we'll read the project from the PLC and once we do that 
It'll come up here shortly. There we go. Now we're in the online. We're running. And you can see here that we have all of our different bits uh, information and status. So once we do that, we looked at the PLC and we knew that those uh, inputs and outputs um, are X's and Y's. So what I'm going to do is if we go to uh, setup and then system configuration, under system configuration, this is where we set what we actually have in our PLC. So we have a power supply here, then we have our CPU and our analog card. And this is exactly what I'm showing and we have on our uh, PLC. So in order to uh, take a look, you can actually see that my CPU, it tells me right here that my addresses, my inputs are X001 to X008 and my outputs are Y001 to Y006. So what I should be able to do is call that up and we'll turn them on and see if that works. So let's just close that for now. And what we will do is go to datum uh, view and we'll add a new data view call it one and what that will do is it will bring up a display screen here so what we'll do is we'll turn on the first bit so we'll edit and our address will be y uh, one and what we'll do is we will set it to the on condition and we will write that. Yes, we will write all the edits. And as you notice on my PLC, the actual first output, Y1, now turns on. And then I can repeat that procedure with the next one. We'll say Y2. And we'll turn it back on again. And then write. And you'll see the next one turns on. Now we also notice that if we uh, called up YD, uh, uh, zero okay we can actually actually the uh, we called up the the whole channel at a time what we could do is set each of the bits individually and see what uh, is happening with each one okay. now in order to delete those we just delete if we want to turn them back off again turn back off or write those to the PLC so you see the addressing and getting information in and out and looking at the memory is all part of looking at the PLC and what the capabilities are. All right. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe to our channel at www.accautomation.ca. Thanks for watching.